Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Pigments. This is video 15, and today we are talking about the filter section. So pigments comes with two filters. They can either be run in series or they can be run in parallel. So right now I have engine one as an analog saw wave. This output is going to filter number one, and this filter number one here, if we change the cutoff, we should hear the change. Just as expected. Now if we turn on filter number two and do the same thing, we hear the same effect. And that's because they are running in series, meaning that the oscillator one is getting sent to filter number one. So filter number one is then sending its sound to filter number two and then to the outputs. Now we can change this behavior by going to the filter routing. And right now, as you can see, this says filter number one is going to filter number two. If you turn this knob all the way to the right, now they're independent, so parallel. So filter number one and two are basically not linked anymore. So if you play a sound here and do the same thing, we hear the same expected behavior, but now on filter number two, we're not gonna hear any change. And that's because they are in parallel or independent from each other. And you could also do anywhere in between here as well. So it's kind of also interesting to route things. Now this drop down menu here where it says pre FX sum, if we click this, this goes to split mode. Now this becomes interesting because now filter number one's output is getting sent only to the FX A and filter number two is only getting sent to the FX B. Meaning here in the FX tab on A, we have three different slots that we can put effects on that's only getting uh, its information from filter number one. And then FX B is only get its, getting its information from filter number two. So there's a lot of creative routing that we can go through this. So let's go back to a new preset and then let's select our analog and kind of talk about these controls here. So you can use the cutoff right here to change the cutoff, obviously with this knob and the resonance. However, you can always grab in the graph, click and left and right is going to change the cutoff and up and down is going to change the resonance. So if you like that kind of behavior, it's definitely available for you to use. And currently right now we are in multi mode. We have a lot of different features, which we're going to talk about, but I just want to let you know that there's a lot more than meets the eye here. So, here in the KBD, which is the keyboard tracking, if we turn this all the way up, let's take our resonance back down, and let's give about a certain cutoff here at about maybe 700 hertz or so. Now, as I send on the keyboard and descend, you can see here in the spectrum that the filter is gonna be changing spots depending on where I press the notes. If I had this off and did the same thing, you can see right here, this is where the filter is getting cut off, There's, and that's basically a static spot. Now here on the mode, we have quite a lot of choices here. We have low pass 6, 12, 24, 36, high pass 6, 12, 24, 36. We have a band pass 12, 24, 36, and then three notch filters at 12, 24, and 36. So a lot of different options for you to play with. And 36 is pretty cool because it's not really offered in too many synths because it's quite a steep curve. Now also here on this K keyboard tracking KBD, we can down click or click this carrot here and we have now a filter one frequency modulation source. So for example, let's pick LFO number one here and let's look at LFO one here. And as we press a key and bring this knob all the way up for full influence, the frequency of this LFO one is modulating the filter. And we can change the rate here. So that's basically the function that that does. We're gonna talk later on about modulation LFOs in a later date, but you can click this down carrot here and see what's available for this filter. Different filters will have different frequency modulation sources available and some will be grayed out. So moving on to our next filter here, we have the low pass gate, which is a very interesting one here. So take a look at how this changes here in this filter shape as I hold down a note. So now in this mode here where it says both, this is acting as a VCA gate and a low pass filter at the same time. So we have the low pass happening here and then it starts to lose level and then right here it's completely gone. And we can change the behavior. We can go to just VCA. And then we can also change to just a low pass. It's kind of a little like a VCA but down about here, so on and so forth. But it's a very, very low cutoff in that sense. But technically it says level, so it's not really a cutoff. But that's that in a nutshell. Now, if we go back to both here and this time, this is a very interesting feature as well. So if we go to an envelope here and let's modulate the level here completely by envelope number two. And let's turn this all the way down so this envelope is going to trigger this level here. 
So anytime we hit a note, this envelope is now triggering this, uh, this filter here. Now let's have a really short decay here, something kind of like that. Now the difference is, is listen to the fade out of this filter here. So if we go to slow, let's turn this up a little bit here. And let's go to fast. Now we can see the differences here on the spectrum view. So slow again. And then fast. And those are the drastic changes. You can also go medium, which as obviously you should know, is kind of the middle ground between these two speeds. And then fast again. And now we also have this carrot here as well, and we have some different options available for, uh, for us for the frequency modulation source, which we just talked about. Now moving on, this one's surgeon is actually very interesting because it's very surgical as the name suggests. So here, if we go to low pass here, look how steep this curve is here, it's insane. And it's actually fairly smooth as well. Now we have this knob spread here, but it's disabled in low pass mode. That's more so for the, whoops, that's more so for the band pass here. So you can really hone in with a certain type of frequency here with this filter. And then we also have the notch. And we have the spread option available to us as well. And as, as we can see here, this is completely removing that as you can kind of see how it cuts off here. But if we did something kind of like this, it's not really move, removing as much as it does here. This is completely black once we move the cutoff. And that's pretty much these first three filters in a nutshell and the filter routing. So in the next video, we're gonna talk about these next four here, which are basically emulations of different types of analog filters. They sound very good. My favorites so far have been Matrix 12 and Mini. So we're gonna talk about that in the next one. And before we go, we do need to talk about the copy swap feature. So for example, let's say you've done a lot of work here to this, to this filter and maybe you wanna use it on the other one. So you can click this up here and then you say copy swap. And now you can say copy filter one into filter two or swap the filters because sometimes swapping the filters can have a drastically different sound so you can kind of a b different things so if we turn on filter number two and this is going to be like multi-mode with a high resonance or something like that we can select this here and then go copy swap and then we can swap the filters too and it's an easy shortcut so we don't have to go back to the next filter and then re-put in our values all over again so i thought i should mention that before we end here so thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video